About 360 million people in tropical Africa live below the poverty line. The leading positions in the rank of 10 poorest countries in the world are countries from the African continent. The vast majority of the inhabitants of these states receive less than $3 a day. Why has the ancestral home of mankind been so impoverished and what factors have made it so miserable? One of the reasons for this deplorable situation was the evolutionary development of most African communities after the Ice Age. The melting of glaciers on the lands of Eurasia and North America led to radical climatic changes, such as the extinction of the local megafauna of mammoth and woolly rhinoceros. 11,000 years ago, prey shortages prompted some local communities to shift to reproductive farming and pastoralism. At the same time, the productivity and ecological diversity of African tropical forests and savannas remained incomparably higher than that of Asian steppes or European forests. The saturation of most African lands with large and medium-sized animals was higher and therefore allowed the African hunter-gatherer communities to maintain a stable standard of living. In addition, the warm climate increased the fertility of plants and increased the harvesting efficiency. Despite the great labor intensity, agrarian economy allowed the inhabitants of Eurasia to create an excess of products, contributed to the construction of a more complex and broad hierarchy of relations, which led to the formation of highly specialized segments of the population. These new layers were warriors and artisans, who were later joined by priests and scientists. Thus, farmers were able to build a base for technological advancement and the capture of new territories, displacing hunter-gatherer tribes. However, the majority of sub-Saharan Africans hunted and gathered up to 1000 BC, setting the stage for sub-Saharan Africa's disastrous technological backwardness. The next factor that slowed Africa's development has been the increase in aridity in the Sahara region in the 4th to 3rd millennium. This has significantly complicated the diffusion of advanced agricultural technologies from West Asia to Sub-Saharan Africa. Climate change is also affecting today's Africa, as the continent has lost about 18% of its agricultural land to drought and devastation since 1960. Another factor that has adversely affected the development of African agriculture is the scarcity of indigenous animals suitable for domestication. The continent's disastrous poverty in certain minerals, such as oil and iron ore, played a significant role in inhibiting the development of indigenous technologies. For example, steel ore in Africa accounts for only 4% of the world's reserves, making iron tools and weapons much more difficult to manufacture. Instead, the fantastic deposits of gold, 89% of the world's deposits, Platinum, 92% of the world's deposits, and other precious metals made this continent attractive to future conquerors from other continents. Another cause of poverty in Africa is the consequences of the European colonization of that continent, which took place from the 15th to the 20th centuries. Initially, Europeans created trading posts on the African coast, actively buying ivory, gold, and valuable wood. However, the biggest demand was for black slaves, which European slave traders sold mainly to America and Europe. African servitude was largely due to internecine warfare when the victorious tribes sold the defeated into slavery. However, sometimes Europeans organized expeditions into the interior of the continent to capture Africans into slavery. In total, about 21 to 50 million Africans became the victims of the slave trade. Since the 19th century, quinine has helped European colonizers resist malaria, which has held them back from inland movement. Since then, the European states have embarked on a rapid annexation of African lands, which the indigenous Africans could not counter because they were at a lower level of social and technological development. During colonization, valuable resources were siphoned from Africa for practically nothing. In doing so, the colonizers formed the boundaries of the occupied territories in such a way that they were mostly inhabited by members of different, often hostile, tribes. In addition, the colonizers made almost no investment in infrastructure, education, or medicine. Since the independence of the African countries, their states have been home to mostly illiterate members of different tribes with no national unity or common identity. This caused two major African disasters. 
The first is tribalism, in which heads of state tried to put in important positions not professionals, but representatives of their tribes or their friends. As a result, such selection mechanisms lead to unprecedented corruption that makes it difficult to overcome poverty. According to Transparency International, of the 20 most corrupt countries in the world, 12 are from Africa. Overall, bribery and theft of public funds cause African countries to lose up to $40 billion each year. A significant part of these funds is then deposited in the accounts of European or American banks. The situation in Equatorial Guinea is a clear example of the negative impact of corruption. Fantastic, as for an African country, GDP of $21,000 exists alongside with the fact that half of the population has no access to clean water, and 26% of children are stunted by systemic malnutrition and disease. The second, and even more damaging consequence of the existence of rival tribes, which don't have a common national identity in one state, is the frequent civil wars and widespread separatist movements that resort to violence to fulfill their demands. In the past 60 years, there have been 22 civil wars on the continent. The biggest of these is the Second Congo War, also known as the Great War of Africa or the Great African War which began in 1998 and claimed more than 4 million lives. Those deaths were due mainly to a humanitarian catastrophe caused by military action. The tendency to rely on ancestral or personal ties and to use violence for political purposes undermines African state institutions, destroys the germs of democracy, and promotes armed takeovers of power. Over the past 50 years, there have been almost 200 coup attempts in Africa, most of which were military and ended with the removal of previous state leaders. Between 2021 and 2022, military coups took place in four African countries, Burkina Faso, Guinea, Mali, and Sudan. Frequent wars and coups destroy infrastructure, incur financial losses, and discourage potential investors. A huge problem in Africa is also the domination of dictatorships, in which the necessary economic and political reforms are not carried out, and leaders gain fabulous wealth in total poverty of the majority of the population. What should be done when 92% of the population in your country live below the poverty line? Infant mortality is extremely high, and there are around 100 doctors working throughout the country. In this situation, car president jean Bedel Bocasa decided to start a fleet of hundreds of exclusive cars and hold his pompous coronation, which cost $20 million, which was almost 20% of the state budget. This Central African dictator seized power in a military coup d'etat, enjoyed luxurious life, carried out mass repression, devoured the corpses of the opposition members he had killed, proclaimed himself emperor, and at the end of his reign, ordered the shooting of children demonstrations. This led to his loss of popularity even among the military's close associates and his further removal from power. Africa's development is hampered by a critical lack of infrastructure, such as roads, railways, water pipes, medical facilities, etc. The continent accounts for only 7% of the world's railways, with Africa's population accounting for 18% of the world population. It should be noted that almost all African railways have been built and are controlled by foreign corporations, making it impossible for African states to profit from them. For example, new railways with a total length of almost 2,000 kilometers in Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Eritrea were built by Chinese companies and privatized by Chinese shareholders. In addition to using Chinese loans during this construction, which will then have to be paid by African governments, China has received concessional terms for the development of local mineral deposits. The largest port in Ghana is owned by Meridian Port Services with French-Dutch capital. The situation is even worse with roads, hospitals, and water pipes. The vast majority of the population of tropical Africa lacks access to clean water and primary health care. Such a poor state of infrastructure significantly reduces business opportunities and worsens people's quality of life. The low level of education of the local population is making the development of African states extremely difficult. As of 2009, nearly one-third of tropical African children had not even completed basic primary education, 
More than 60% of adolescents had not completed school, and only 5% of young people had completed higher education. Tuition fees at the senior school levels and university levels in most African countries are an obstacle to higher education. In conditions of total poverty, few people can afford to pay for their children's education. Education in African schools is affected by a total lack of equipment, textbooks, and school infrastructure. In South Africa, for example, 79% of schools do not have a library. In Tanzania, 92% of children do not have enough school books. African countries have a commodity economy in which most commodities are exported directly to the more developed states and final goods are imported from the more developed states. Thus, most of the added value from production is concentrated in richer countries. In addition, African economies tend to specialize in a few commodities such as oil, gold, gemstones, or coffee. This limits the development and diversification potential of their economies and increases their vulnerability to fluctuations in world commodity prices. For example, Gabon's GDP fell from $18.2 billion to $14 billion due to the drop in oil prices in 2015. Africa has a dynamic population growth rate of 2.8% and the highest birth rate of any continent. For example, if this fertility rate is maintained, Nigeria's population could double by mid-21st century and increase up to around 400 million. Consequently, there is a need for a substantial expansion of educational and health facilities, the number of which are already too woefully insufficient. A large proportion of young people in the barely warm African economy are unemployed. For example, in the Central African Republic, 58% of the unemployed are between the ages of 20 and 30. Such numbers of young people who have no prospects for any kind of professional self-fulfillment encourage many of them to engage in criminal activities and military conflicts to make a living in such difficult conditions.